the video game industry is a powerhouse, generating over 200 million dollars, surpassing the film and music industry combined. 2.5 million people work with games today, and 58% of them are working with code. Learning to code is one of the best thing you can do, and when combined with game development, it's a deadly combination. And if I could go back in time, this is exactly how I would do it. For context, I have over a decade of game developer experience. And don't worry if you haven't gone into any fancy school or don't know a line of code. In today's society, it's more than normal to learn things online because the ease of use and we don't need schools that much anymore. So if that's what you want, this is the video for you. I'll break up this video into five main components. Mindset. When and where to begin. How to avoid falling into traps. Skill set and growth. And environment. The first point, programmer's mentality. The first thing we need to develop as programmers is the ability to quickly grasp new concepts and technologies, as well as problem solve. The recent Computer Science 50 in Harvard class starts the way it does with the most fundamental level. It's because you develop the mentality of a programmer. You must learn to approach problems with the mindset that everything is solvable in one way or another inside and outside of the box. To solve it, you usually just have to consider different angles and approaches to the same solution. So, where should you begin and where should you start today? If you're already well known with a programming language or a scripting language, start with that in mind and research which tools can use that language to develop games with. For example, if you know Python, you can go with Pygame. If you know C Sharp, you can go with Unity. If you're looking to learn a new programming language or you don't have any programming experience from before, you should probably start with C Sharp and C++ in that order. You could also try out Java, Python and Lua. But these are less standardized in modern game development. Picking which tool to choose from is essential, but you don't want to get into the nitty gritty of what tool you should choose. You should just choose one of them. And if you pick one of them, you can start today. Remember, tools serve a purpose. They're not meant to be a burden. Choose something to use as your tool. The specific choice doesn't matter much at this stage. It's never about what tools you choose. It's about how you use them. So don't get stuck picking and choosing. Just pick one and you will grow. Start following tutorials, but never end up in tutorial hell. So what do you mean with tutorial hell? Many people rely solely on tutorials, trying to piece things together to create a project. This often results in only being able to implement what is taught in the tutorial and never being independent enough so you can create your own code. This is not how you should use tutorials. Trust me, every programmer has been there. You should instead follow tutorials and experimenting with what they teach gets comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you get a better and better, you should only look at tutorials as ideas and you should never take the code right out of them because it will never even fit your tech or games either way. One thing that's important to realize is that everyone in every profession ever gets better with practice, right? But on the flip point, if you just stay with theory, that is not the case. You don't get better at the craft by doing the theory. You get better at the craft by doing the craft and then complementing it with theory. But you should never have theory as your main objective. It should always be the practice. Make small projects like your life depends on it. It's all about the learning process of creating games. You should never spend months on a section of your game just because you want it perfect for like releasing it. Instead of focus on creating smaller games to getting a hand of the actual production pipeline and how a game is made from start to finish. This will make you a more well-rounded game dev that's suited for any season. Your path depends on if you aim to become a solo indie game developer or if you want to work for a big company or together with a team. If you want to go indie, you'll have to widen your expertise to cover a bigger gap. In contrast, many companies search for specialists who are really good at one specific thing. So finding out quite early if you want to work for yourself in an indie game studio or if you want to work for a company is a bit because you won't have to learn things that won't be necessary for your specific needs. So avoid unnecessary baggage. Find a dragon that's big enough for you to slay. At this point, when people are beginning to get into the rhythm of actually creating things, 
they usually just jump straight on onto their dream game. I'm gonna make my dream game. It's like it's gonna be the best game ever. Or it's gonna take X amount of time. It's not hard. I will, it will just take three months. Don't. Don't create your dream game. Never create your dream game. It will take 10 times more than you think it will actually take. You will be unpleasantly surprised that you probably don't even have the skills to create your dream game. You will half-ass it. It will take so much time that you will not learn other things meanwhile. And it will just be a mess. Don't create your dream game. And your mind, maybe it's a great idea, but from experience and from everyone in the game industry's experience, don't create your dream game, don't. You will instead be much better off smalling a lot of smaller dragons along the way, creating smaller projects and gradually working your way up. The fact is, you can always find something that's hard enough for you to get a challenge, but easy enough for you to actually complete it. And that's where we see growth. The same goes with making your own game engines. Just don't make them because people have told you to make them. Make them if they are big enough for you to slay, but if not, start with the baby dragons. Don't start with C and assembly just because someone said that it's the best. It might be in certain scenario, just as CSS and JavaScript is better in certain scenario, but you can't say that and not take it with a grain of salt. Just don't start with things that people tell you to do. It's learning to code and learning to be a goddamn good game developer. And I know you can be. Emerge into the amazing world that is game dev. If you surround yourself in an environment where people are game devs, you are gonna get the mentality of thinking of a game dev more and more, and this will make you better and better at the craft you're doing. Start off with following a lot of people in the space of game development, and especially people that share a lot of code. So, some examples are The Cherno, Thin Matrix, and of course, yours truly. Also, don't be shy to show what you've created. This is perfect to show that you actually exist and get your foot into the industry right away. One of the biggest mistakes, people in game development especially, is waiting too long to showcase our work. A lot of people, and I mean a lot of people in game development are insanely skilled, but they will never be seen if they don't show their self. This also feeds into the previous point I said, which is to thrive in the environment you want to become good at, right? If you want to become a game dev, try to be a game dev. Be as the game devs right now and you will come up there. If you start sharing your game development, you will get more and more submerged into the environment and become a game developer. And the best part about learning game programming especially, is that you will be such a well-rounded programmer that you can transfer your skills into any field you want in the future. There will also come a time later down the line, your programming journey, where you will begin to feel like you stagnate a bit. And this is the time where I usually recommend that you look into creating your custom game engine. And if you're interested in that, you will love this next video.